What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are checking out whatever the hell this thing is. The Tube Works Tube Driver. Let's do it! Alright guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, where have you been all my life? My name is Kyle and what I do is I take awesome high gain amps, overdrives, guitars, cabs, speakers, pickups. I record them with a simple SM57 setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-Standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes that refuse to retake shots when they say something kind of weird, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. Why did I say it like that? All right, guys, so today we're gonna take a quick little look at this amp, the TubeWorks Tube Driver. I honestly bought this amp knowing literally zero about it. I tried to look it up, tried to look some info up on forums and old uh, you know, Google posts and stuff like that. Couldn't find anything. The only thing I could find were a couple of sold listings on Reverb. So for the price that I got it for, I figured, you know what? I'll take a chance on it. We'll make a little video demo and then we'll move it along. So. Uh, when I purchased this, I purchased it off of Guitar Center's used website and they had it listed as a tube amp and because I couldn't find any real info on the amp, I was expecting a tube amp. And what I got was basically a Marshall valve state because this thing has a solid state preamp, a solid state power section, and then it has a real 12AX7 tube in it to provide real tube overdrive. Uh, it really seems to make pretty much zero difference because you can flip it on and off with the switch over here and my ears are having a really tough time picking up on any of the differences so go ahead and keep that fresh in your mind but otherwise yeah it's got a clean channel it's got a dirty channel it does have an effects loop uh the controls on the dirty channel which is where we're going to be for this demo are incredibly simple you've got your three band eq a master volume and a tube drive that's it. So this is going to be a short video. We're going to play around with some settings, with some overdrives, with some riffs, and uh, see what type of tones that we can get out of this thing because it is getting sent on its way today. So with that being said, for the intro track, I was using my Balliger Typhon here, which has a Duncan distortion in the bridge. We had the Deadwell duality overdrive on in front of the amp. We are going to turn that off. And as usual, we're going to put everything back to noon here as far as the EQ controls. And then I'm going to turn the gain down and we're gonna turn the tube drive off. So here is how everything sounds with the amp, nine o'clock on the gain, everything else at noon. Here we go. All right, so pretty uninspiring. Let's go ahead and push that gain up. Let's go up to 11 o'clock. Still pretty uninspiring. One thing I have noticed is you really got to push the mids and highs to kind of bring this amp to life. Otherwise, it sounds kind of muffled. So let's go ahead and bump those up a little bit on each. Overall, it's got a pretty tight feel to it. Uh, the gain structure is pretty interesting. It's almost kind of crunchy. Not super saturated. Let's go ahead and push that up even more. Yeah. 
And again, it's still just kind of uninspiring. If I go back up to E standard, let's hear how it sounds with some like crunchier classic rock riffs and some chords. I'm gonna pull that gain back just a tad. I'm going to bump the highs and the mids. All right, so overall, yeah, it just sounds kind of dead with the gain lower in my opinion. Let's go ahead and bump that gain right on up. So yeah, uh, yeah, it just, like I keep saying, it's kind of got a muffled sound to it. Doesn't sound Terrible, it's just kind of dead sounding. Let's get a little bit more high end because I noticed you really got to push it to bring it to life. There's also this weird thing going on where the volume kind of fluctuates on your first chord. It almost like swells in like the front of the preamp is being overloaded, but I mean, uh, it doesn't sound like it's being overloaded once you continue to play for a second. It just sounds like it kind of swells in. It's really odd. So let's go ahead, let's kick in this tube drive. I'm gonna play a chord, let it ring out for a second, and then I will kick in the tube drive and play the same chord and see if we can notice a difference. If anything, it seems like it takes out a little bit of that kind of high-end solid state fizziness, but the difference is extremely subtle. Kind of curious to see how well the mic picks it up. I'm kind of hoping it picks it up better than I can hear it in the room because I'm struggling to be able to tell what's going on there. So uh, let's go ahead and push that gain up even more. Fairly tight, fairly punchy again. It just needs mids and highs or else it sounds dead. So a little bit more mid, a little bit more high. Overall, not bad, very tight. Let's actually pump that low end up a little bit, see if we can get a little bit more punch out of it. At that point, I feel like we should push up the lows a little bit more, pull the mids back maybe. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit mid-scooped even with the mids at six, but uh, not a terrible tone. Very percussive in the low end. And we still have no overdrive on in front of this amp either. So uh, even with no overdrive, it's got a nice punchy percussive low end to it. How many more times should I say that? I'll say it a couple more times. Let me know down in the comments how many times you'd like to hear me say it. You guys are gonna laugh. This tone reminds me of the Marshall JVM that I just demoed. Like really not far off at all. This has a solid state feel and a little bit of a solid state sound and it's missing certain frequencies and the high mids that make it feel like not a tube amp. Well, the JVM 410, which I just demoed, is a tube amp. And 
It sounds pretty similar to this thing, so a little bit odd. But yeah, we need an overdrive here. Let's kick an overdrive in and see what kind of difference we get. We're on the Boss SD1. Let's turn that drive down. Holy dagger to the forehead. All right, let's get that high turned back down a little bit. I don't think that this is the overdrive for this amp. So let's go ahead and switch over to something that's gonna be a little rounder in the mids, like the MXR M77. Oh, I instantly like that much better. Extra sloppy. Uh, yeah, it has quite a bit of gain going on. Let's pull that gain back. Let's add a little bit more mid because the amp just seems to suffer from a lack of clarity with those mids down. Honestly, that's not bad at all. Let's get one more bump up on those mids. Let's get a little bit more low. That sounds pretty good. That really doesn't sound bad. Not bad at all. That MXR M77 really uh, fits nicely with this thing. So let's kick that off. Let's go over to the Electric Eye Mud Killer. Last but not least, let's grab a drop tune guitar, hear a drop tune riff for this thing, and then we'll call it a day. But overall, it's not terrible. It's not great. It's not anything inspiring, but you can definitely get usable tones out of it. It's got a good amount of gain, um, good amount of low end, missing a little bit of clarity. It's missing a presence knob for sure. That would probably help fix some of the things that I'm not loving about it. But let's check it out with a drop D guitar, and then we'll call it a day. I don't know why I'm talking like this. All right, guys, we have an old friend. This is my very much neglected a 2004 Gibson Explorer. Um, let's hear how this thing sounds in drop C. That's without touching any of the controls. Let's actually go back over to the MXR. And let's get a little bit more gain on the amp. guys that's gonna do it for me today on the tube works tube driver what did you think of this amp i personally think that it sounds okay it's not amazing it's not terrible it's right in the middle it uh, can definitely give you usable tones but it's not anything that i would probably go suggesting to somebody who's looking for a good solid state amp in my opinion it lacks a little bit of clarity it is nice and tight has a big punchy low end you can really kind of start to bring it to life once you push the mids and highs but otherwise it, it's 
I don't know, just it's so-so. With that being said, what did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. I am very curious to see if you guys have ever played or even heard of this amp. What did you think of the sounds that I got out of it? And if you have played it, what do you think of it? What types of tones are you able to pull out of it? And is it an amp that you enjoy? Let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to meet you guys down there to chat about it. If you want to support the channel and what I do here, you can go down into my description of my video, visit my Sweetwater affiliate link, get yourself something nice from Sweetwater. I get a little kickback and it costs you nothing extra. And then I get to invest in more toys for the channel. So we both win. Or you can consider adding your name to this list of incredible people by joining my Patreon community and supporting the channel that way. It means so much to me to have all these Patreons supporting the channel and what I do here. So if you wanna join, the link for that is down in the description and as an added side effect, I'll love you forever, whether you want me to or not. Last but not least, consider joining my Facebook group where we chat about gear all day long and it's just a really nice, positive environment. No toxicity because we get rid of that crap immediately. It's just a great place to talk about gear. So. With that being said, thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another ant. There we go.